my loves welcome back please don't mind me i am saging this space real quick because i actually was working here late last night working on uncrossing oils which oh my god you guys oh my god unbelievable that's all i gotta say unbelievable the magic was so real last night it was so real just really feels good to be able to move my um altar here outside anyways um and be able to work my magic so how are we feeling how are you guys feeling what's the energy what's the vibe i'm hoping that you are well i'm hoping that you are doing okay so far so good on this end i feel a lot of good energy around me i feel a lot of good energy within me Yeah, and that's the vibe. Okay, let's go ahead and check in with the energies right now. What's, what, is, what is it that needs to be seen, felt, heard, understood at this moment? I feel like I haven't shuffled for you guys in a, in a, in a while. Because <sighs> I do the daily readings, but I'm also spending a lot of my time working on the apothecary. Working within the apothecary. And um, there's been so much things going on in the world that there's a strong need for a lot of, yep, work. As I say that, we have, first and foremost, we have the death card and we have eight of pentacles. I'm not surprised at all to see these two cards be the first ones to show up. Why? Because they've kind of been the overarching themes lately. They've kind of been the overarching vibes. I'm not someone who likes to traditionally follow tarot meanings although they are helpful. I, want to allow my intuition to speak. And the first word that I'm hearing right now is, um, I'm hearing law and order being restored. Law and order being restored. I feel really strong in my spirit that some of you guys, okay, when I, when I hear the word law and order, this is gonna be tough for some for some of you to understand. Um, but I think for the most of you guys, you'll get it. When I hear law and order restored, what this is saying is not exclusively law and order. It's cause and effect, it's karma. Some things are completely inevitable. There's events that are happening in your life that are inevitable. Regardless of the work and the effort or the attention or the intention that you have put into this situation, the outcome would have been the same. There are some paths that you will take in this life that you will choose to take them or be called to choose to take them because the lessons that you have to learn are going to be great. They're going to be great. They're going to change you as a person. I'm also feeling this really strong message about looking back at your life and looking back at yourself and how you've shown up in your life and watching your own evolution and watch how you have grown and in what directions you have grown into. As you're looking at the parts of you that have evolved and shifted and changed, we don't look at that with judgment. We look at it and see that at one point there was a part of you that was a newbie. At one point there was a part of you that was just beginning. At one point there was a part of you that had only just begun to grow. And now look at how far that growth has taken you. Some of you have learned to be calloused in some way, meaning to self-protect. Some of you have learned to sense, sense energies before they've even had a chance to confirm who and what they are. But you have a, a great sense 
of character. You have a great sense of someone's intentions. You have an you have a great sense of what they mean. Even if they're not saying it clearly, you can see it. And it's the path, the in, the intensity or the revealing of the path that you were guided to choose to take in this life that has taught you how to go from fresh eyes to wiser eyes. And with that, there always comes like a little bit of a price, you know, like there's always something that gets exchanged for that. It could be some of your joy. It could be um, time away from, you know, whatever. It Everything comes with somewhat of a price. That's what happens anytime there's a choice or decision that, that gets that gets made. Spirit wants to refer to that part within you right now. It's interesting because as I look down at the coins, they almost, or the coin, it almost mirrors this person right here, this, this body. And of course, with the death card, there is the ending of things, of course. And of course, with the death card, there's the new beginning of things. Spirit is not trying to talk about the ending or the beginning. It wants to talk about what happened. What is happened? Like what has already happened? What you're, what is happening? Spirit says that with a spirit is, I'm getting a strong message about intention is everything and willpower is very important, but so too is honoring karma and arm um, I just, I was gonna say honoring, but I also was saying armor. Some of you guys feel, as I'm looking at this right now, both of these people are covered in armor to protect themselves. And I genuinely get this feeling that the armor itself, although it's there to serve a purpose to protect you, does it start to get heavy? Does it start to get uncomfortable? So even though you know that you put on the armor because of the things that have passed, and even though you've put on the armor, you keep on the armor for things that, to protect you from the future, how does carrying the armor and how does carrying the weight and how does carrying this responsibility or this get up, I don't wanna call it a get up, but um, like what you put on every day to prepare yourself for the day, how does it feel on you? It's almost reminding me of how some of us women and men will put on makeup every day. And I've heard, <laughs> lovely enough, I've heard some people call it war paint. Like they put their red lipstick as their war paint. They put on their war paint before they show up for the world. And sometimes it does feel good. Don't get me wrong. I'm someone who loves cosmetics. I love makeup. Um, not, it hasn't always been that way. I remember in my very hippie days um, where I was just walking around barefaced and with my didgeridoo and <laughs> barely showering and just <laughs> basking in it. I just loved it. I was always walking around like patchouli oil on my body. I'm sure some of you guys can relate. You would never know that I'm the same person. Same person, just different, you know? There's different ways that we showed up. There's different ways that I showed up. And even though the same things that may feel good and that you know why you're wearing them because they do serve a purpose. Maybe how people look at you changes and shifts. Maybe how you feel about yourself changes and shifts. But there's this recognition about what we wear, whether it be metaphorical or whether it be actually physically what we're wearing on our faces, on our bodies, or whatever the case that we have on us to protect us or to shield us or that it serves some purpose. I just heard again, cause and effect. I, as I'm saying that, I'm getting a strong message that there's no judgment here. This is a no judgment zone. And the divine doesn't say that certain things have happened to you because you've done anything to do them. It just means that whatever you would have done, however you would have shown up, the outcome would have been and will be the same. And for that reason, it's really good. It's in your best interest to carry that knowledge, just like you're this person 
this angel of death, essentially, so to speak, is coming through with this flag and it, it announces itself. I'm almost seeing that there are certain things that are announcing themselves to you as well. They state, they, they talk, they know, you know their intention, you can feel it, you can sense it again by lessons learned. I think right now the divine wants to make sure that you pure hearted, pure intention, that you are not maybe not overworking yourself, but that there's some things that literally can't be changed and that you just have to go through it. You have to work through it. I'm also getting this really strong message about like miraculous intervention. And as I, as I hear that, I'm, I heard spirit say, open your hands. And an open hand, an open palm, an extend, extended palm is an act of submission. It's you submitting yourself to the powers that be, to divine or to whatever the case is. It's saying, I am open, I am receiving, I am ready, I am prepared to, give, to, to be given what you want to give me. And I feel that this is the hand of God or the hand of the divine or your angels and your guides who are saying that if you know that there's some things, or at least in this situation that is lingering around your presence right now, if you know that something is inevitable because that's just karma sometimes, and by karma, I don't mean that you've done anything and you're deser deserving of any punishment or reward. Karma just means that no matter how the cards fall, no matter what steps you take, no matter what choices you make, at the end of the day, the path would always lead you to the same outcome. That's what karma, that's what karma means, at least in this situation. And there's this message right now that spirit is saying that there is something called karma that has to come, come into play here. And all things considered, they want you to be really aware of how karma is announcing itself in your life right now. And that this is not an act of punishment or you either, either reward, it's a part of the journey. For some of you guys who are going through it because the death card can signify in huge intense changes, huge uh, intense transformation. For some of you guys who are going through it right now, you have to go through it right now. The only way out is through and the best way to do to, to go through it is to take it step by step by step. And in that process, at the end of the day, it's very important that you disarmor yourself, disrobe yourself and cleanse your energy. Because it's easy sometimes to take our work home. It's, and by home, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the stuff that we carry as we move about the world, which is our home. It's not necessarily that you clock, once you clock out at work, that you leave your work at home and you leave your desk, leave things on your desk. I mean, that could be a, a specific message for someone, but for many of you guys, it means that it's the, the, the thoughts that kind of linger in your head or the feelings or the beliefs, the ideas that kind of embed themselves on you, that stick themselves to you. It's so important for you to take that off, for you to disarmor, for you to disrobe. There's ways to do that. You can take spiritual baths. You can, after um, difficult situations, it's important that you know you go for a walk in nature and you cleanse your energy and just get it out, talk it out. Once you talk it out, don't continue to talk about it. Let it go because it's, it's giving it life. There's one thing to get it off of your chest and it's another thing to talk about it so much that that becomes your only reality. Give yourself the time, just like this person here would probably clock in and clock out. Give yourself the time to check into the situation and, the, and to check out. And when you're checking out, let it go. Completely let it go. 
karma also has an amazing way of sorting itself out. And if that is truly the case, if whatever is on your head and heart right now is karmic related, this means that there's nothing that you can do or that you haven't already done that will change the outcome. There does have to be this beautiful act of surrender. I also get this strong sense that surrendering brings fear. Surrendering means a realization, a reality, a reality check that might be hard for some of us to kind of like sit with and work through. And number one, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's relatable. That's a very relatable friend. That's very relatable. Um, number two, I actually don't know what number two is. I'm just gonna tell you it's relatable. You know, like just, Side by side right now, arm to arm, tarot card to tarot card, hand to hand, I'm telling you as your friend, that it's, it's just relatable. I see you as a human being, I see you, I see it. All right, let's look to see if there's any additional. Messages. Four of Pentacles, yeah. This is something that isn't going anywhere. Like it's, I and by it, I feel the outcome, the blessing, the gift, the the goodness. I genuinely get this strong sense that it's secure. It's secure, it's stabilized. You are going to be secured and stabilized. Just like this person is holding on so tightly, intentionally. Like look how everything is so perfectly placed. The key, did I say key? Okay, so maybe that's a metaphor for someone or a message for someone. But the key, I'm going to call it a key for right now, on the top of his head, the coin at the center of his chest, and the two coins at both of his feet. There's not one coin here that is misplaced. Everything is there, stabilized, held onto, secured. And so are you, and so is the outcome. Whoa. Ew. Yeah. Wow, guys, cause and effect, man. See, can't even make this shit up. <sighs> yeah, justice card, page of swords reversed, and ace of swords. There is a truth here and a resolution or information that may not be something, well, not may not. It's not something that you're going to be able to be the first one to see it. If anybody's going to see it, it's going to be the divine. The divine's going to be able to understand what's going on before you will. And this is why it's so important for you to not try to spend too much time trying to figure out what the future looks like and how you could have changed things in the past and what you have to do right now here in the present. Like, that's really intense. As I'm even saying that, my chest just got tight. My energy just got tight. It just didn't feel good. And I believe being a realist as a spiritual person, and but also as a realist, I believe that there's a time and a place for action. I believe that there's a time and a place for information to come through and for there to be problem solving and just act, act activity. But in this case, there's something right now that has been, I just heard like a petition that has been submitted. So if you haven't written a petition or if you need help in this uh, circumstance, um, more than, you know, prayer or that if, if you're someone who's going through it right now or going, something is heavy, sitting heavy on your chest and it does matter. It does matter. Even if you're someone who says, well, Jess, there's people who are really going through it right now. There's the earthquakes that are going on across the world. There's COVID that hit and all these other things like, yeah, maybe, yes, of course, those things are very valid, but so too is the balance and the health of your heart and the happiness of your heart. Those things too are factored into this greater plan. So with whatever it is, good or bad, that you are facing right now, this situation is something that is being ruled by karma. There's a cause and effect here. And how things are panning out is not necessarily something that you can change. It's not something that you can think your way out of. It's not something that you can talk your way out of. It's something that truly you have to move forward through. It feels very faded. It feels very faded. What's going to be the outcome? Very important questions with Jazz. What's going to be the outcome? Okay, that really... Ah! All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> I'm just kidding.
<laughs> okay. Okay, so this is very honest. So we have the Tower card and the Five of Cups. So there does feel like there will be a little bit of a loss here in the situation. And by a little bit, I don't know why, but I'm seeing Five of Cups here. I'm hearing putting things into perspective this need to put things into perspective that again, your, your mind might not be able to, I, okay. I don't want you to think that I'm not being sensitive to what you're going through because number one, I'm the messenger here. Um, but I get this really strong message from spirit that putting things into perspective, um, there's some losses that aren't really truly losses. And even though you might be trying your hardest not to lose something or to make things kind of fair out in the way that you want them to be, ultimately, I do get a strong sense that with karma and like, quote unquote, cause and effect, there's this thing that everything has to come in divine order. And in order for things to, quote unquote, be fair in the eyes of the divine, it's not always what we want it to be initially. But over time, our perspective starts to shift and then we learn the blessing. We start to see the blessing. But ultimately, the outcome may not be something that we're like jumping through the hoops that we're ready to see. I'm almost feeling like opening up for readings. If this reading is resonate, re resonating for you guys, if that's the case. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying this right now. I'm actually like, I've got equal feelings of excitement, like like enthusiasm, meaning like a willingness to want to do it deep in my spirit and also fear because I don't want to create like a stampede. But I do honestly get a strong sense of, maybe I will, maybe I will. Well, if you're feeling called to this, to get a reading, I'm, oh my God, I'm so scared to say that because I just really don't want to stampede. Okay, don't, okay. Between you and I, <laughs> like, and the rest of you too, but <laughs> it's not as, I mean, whatever. Uh, God, jeez. Sorry, I'm thinking about it. For those that feel cold, I'll do my best to do a reading. Um, but also don't put it, don't start crazy, like putting it out there. Um, because I really don't want like everybody to come in. Not, okay, sorry. I don't know how to explain this. Okay. Anyways, that's that, this conversation, the side conversation is just as Jessica, not just as channeling. Um, as you can tell, they're same person, just two different people because um, sometimes I'm a little, Virgo awkward I think I swear like Virgo is like the most and I'm still doing it right now I'm kind of going off topic here but I believe that Virgo Virgos are some of the most awkward signs I really do we're just so awkward powerful but awkward yeah, anyways name a more awkward sign <laughs> that is like I don't say not comfortable with it because I'm, I'm definitely comfortable with my awkwardness, especially now as an adult. I wasn't as a child growing up. I definitely felt awkward. I was painfully aware of my awkwardness. But I feel like Aquarians are very awkward, but they like embrace the, they like love it. They like love it. Everybody, I feel like, okay, I'm going off, but like last thing, I feel like even like all the other zodiac signs, they like embrace their awkwardness in their own way. Unless I'm missing something. I feel like Gemini's too, but they just don't sit with it long enough. They're just like, ah, oh, fuck it. And then they like move on versus a Virgo will be awkward as hell and then be picking it apart like I'm doing right now. So anyways, <laughs> moving on, there is this, let me see if I can even get back into the spirit of channeling because I kind of deviated here. But what I'm trying to say is that there is this feeling here of disappointment Um, but to be honest with you, it feels like a blessing. I hate to be cliche. It does feel like a little blessing in, in disguise. It feels like you might, I 
I feel like with the justice card here, I, I keep getting a strong sense of there's nothing that you could have done differently. The outcome would have come the, come out the same way. So the lesson would have been learned regardless. Um, so there's that. Okay, what else, Spirit? Like, what would you like? Yeah. Nine of Wands is the message of, like, just don't give up right now. Don't give up. What would I like? I would like you to just hold on. I would like you to carry on. I would like you to stay strong, steadfast, trust, trust me. Just think about the fact that if this person is holding on to this last stick and he put, or he or she put all of these wands here in order to protect himself or protect herself or their, their self, that has to come from some space of faith, but also maybe even some level of divine inspiration that told you how to, how to place certain things in order to protect yourself. In this case, I generally get a sense that nothing, the armor that you put up is not, it's in expectation of something that you feel is going to punch you or hurt you or take you down. And in reality, it's not going to. The worst case scenario is that you may not get the desired outcome that is that you want, but you'll realize that it wasn't going to take you out anyway. It may not be something, because even with the death card showing up, sometimes it's something that you face, it announces itself, you hear it, you see it coming, you're dreading it, but there is some level of relief when it happens, when it's over, and when you're not just sitting there waiting for the next blow to come. Wow, Divine, I truly want to hear your voice through this deck right here. Wow, those you love, love you. There's this feeling here about the word love and love is something that in its best, highest version, it, it comes with a lot of unconditions, you know? Like it doesn't come with conditions. So love sometimes means that, you know when they say, if you love it, let it go. If it's meant to be, then you'll know because then their feelings start to show and you realize she wasn't a hoe, I don't know. <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm still being silly, Jess, but those you love, love you. So love comes with no conditions. It doesn't come with, I do this for you, you do this for me. You said we're going to be in this forever, so you can't leave or this can't happen. Or it's this feeling of, listen, I'm looking out for you and you're looking out for me and this is in our best interest and whatever the cards are, how they're falling right now, the intention is not to hurt you, although the outcome may be hard to deal with. The fact of the matter is, and the truth of the matter is, is that you're a good person. And at the end of the day, you're going to be looked out, out for. Things are going to pan out for you and you are being treasured and prized. And that's gonna be the realization. That, and that it's also nothing personal. Okay, wait. It says, to be beautiful in the eyes of another, simply forget they're watching, tally-ho the universe. Let's grab another one. Shall we? Okay, say less. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. See? Karma is on your side. Karma is on your side. Karma is on your side. What have we been talking about this entire time? Karma is not something to be feared. It's something to be respected, though. It's something to surrender to. It's something to be open to because it's not out here just trying to, like, punish people. It's not out here trying to reward people. It's going to find the fairest outcome and there will be a fair outcome there will be ew okay um if you could read all of the minds that i read hear all of the prayers that i hear and beat all the hearts that i beat i wonder if you'd even believe how often you're thought of talked about and fallen in love with it's payback time on delay on delay the universe i just feel like what this is like the universe is taking everything into consideration in order to find the perfect outcome for that situation. This could not get any better um, or more clear in my mind. Having said that, let's ask for a little more. <laughs> Why get a little when you can get a lot? And the universe is like, okay, wow, you don't need to worry. You really don't. 
I know you can't see that right now. Sorry, guys. I'm like kicking this thing around. Uh, this is a new setup here, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, so I'm sorry for any vertigo that you might be experiencing at, as a result of this reading today. And also uh, my little annoying puns and conversation, side conversations with you. But honestly, it's literally, whoa, it's not only about being right. Guys, see? And like, what is right? What? Okay. For those of you guys that are just like, Jess, I don't get it. Think about right and wrong especially with justice card, like what is right and what is wrong. It's not about, it's not only about being right. So then like, what is it about? Let's see. In all tests of character, when two, wow. When two viewpoints are pitted against each other in the final analysis, the thing that will strike you the most is not who was right or wrong, strong or weak, wise or foolish, but who went to the greater length and considering the other's perspective. Do you remember how I said there's going to be a supreme perspective shift here that is really that's I just think it's a lesson right now that it's not it's truly not about being right or wrong guys random but I just got a vision of the divine divine secrets of the yaya sisterhood I don't know why that's coming through some of you guys might need to watch that movie or read the book but if you feel called to in your spirit do it I don't know why that just came through but I felt it strong like strong 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 divine sisters of the yaya sisterhood um, I've actually seen the movie it's a few times actually um, with Sandra Bullock. It's been years, years. Hmm. Okay. Wow. All there is to love has been there all along. So I just, this is a strong message right now that I'm getting that I just feel the strong message that there's just so much to be gained from the situation, whether you can see it right now. And chances are, to be honest with you, you're not going to be able to see it right now. Okay, clearly. I get it. I'm your friend here on this. I understand. Um, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it right away, but in time you will. I also get the strong sense that it will be okay. And you just truly don't need to worry about this. It will be okay. You're going to be okay. It'll make sense. I know sometimes when you're in it, it doesn't feel like you'll be able to get through it. But I also want you to kind of like revisit the start of this reading where I said to you, you know, look at how far you've come. Look at how far you've grown and all the different ways that you have grown. Like that is real, man. That is real. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is a part of your character. Not only are you someone who has grown in the past and is growing now, but you're someone who's going to grow in the future and it's not going to break you. Not only does your character show the desire to grow and the desire to transform and the, the desire to try, that's something that doesn't get erased from you. That is who you are. And that says a lot. And I fuck with that. Like, I really, truly vibe with that. Like, you are my people. All right, guys, honestly, I know I say this every time, but genuinely, it's been years. It's been years, years I've I come on here. And I'm just grateful that the universe has still made the way for me to continue to share my messages with you in all the different ways that it shows up. I just want to thank you for being present. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for respecting me, my voice, my messages, my time. And I want to thank you for even being open to allowing me to help you in any way, shape, or form that I can. It says a lot to me. And I want you to know that my intention is to make sure that we're all good. You know, that is, that's what I want. I really want to make sure that we're all good in all our different ways. We may be so different. That is true. Clearly, right? Like we're all different. But at the end of the day, like despite any differences as far as like what you like to eat or maybe your core beliefs or maybe even your morals, like maybe we have different, different, different morals. I'm sure we do. But at the end of the day, like I just really do want us all to be good. And I just been feeling uh, maybe I should do a video about this later where I just kind of like chit chat and talk to you guys. But I say that I'm probably I'm probably not going to do it. But something that's been sitting on my spirit lately is something that I've always, that has always sat with me in its authenticity and being so transparent. And I just really want to thank you guys. 
I just really want to thank you. And I'm so grateful. And for those of you guys that see it, and I know there's many, and for some of you guys, you'll probably be like, well, why does she keep saying this? Is there something going on? No, no, I just feel it. It just blows my mind away every single time. Like really blows my mind, especially after, okay, now I'm going off, but like, especially after the last two years, like, wow. I think I'm just like settling lately. I'm in this stage of my life where I'm like actually starting to settle, especially after I, you know, got my dream home. I didn't even realize that this is actually my dream home. And I'm just like, whoa, I'm safe. Wow. Okay. I'm zoning out. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I will um, open up just for a few little readings here and there. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'll talk to you. Thank you so much for hanging out. We were Goodbye. created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. The Hottie Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you, You'll find time and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention and alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.